Hello students, previous lecture we did helium neon laser and argon ion and krypton lasers. We studied their details and we compared the both for their advantages and disadvantages. Now in this lecture, we are going to discuss the molecular lasers. That means the most famous one being the carbon dioxide and the nitrogen laser. Usually carbon dioxide laser is only asked. Now molecular lasers, that means Obviously, the active medium here is going to be the molecules of the gases such as carbon dioxide, nitrogen, etc. Now, molecules will be used as an active medium. They are very highly efficient when you compare them to atomic and ionic lasers because First good thing is that they are requiring a very low pumping power to achieve population inversion. They are operating in the infrared and ultraviolet region. And yes, they do require a water cooling system because large amount of heat is being generated here. And let us discuss carbon dioxide laser is asked a lot in your long questions that discuss in detail the carbon dioxide laser. First, a very short understanding of your carbon dioxide molecules. See, carbon and two oxygens. Now, what happens is that it is a four-level molecular gas laser system. Ruby laser is three-level. It is inefficient. But the higher the levels you keep increasing, the more efficient your laser becomes. It is having very good efficiency and good power. And it is also having the capability to give you a continuous output. And population is inversion will be achieved through gas discharge and Pulsed mode, we can obtain output power of usually approximately 10 kilojoules, whereas 100 kilowatt output power can be obtained in continuous mode. So see, the carbon molecule and oxygen, they, they, are, they can be studied in many ways with carbon as center, oxygen taking its place here. That is why it has been judged under the four level category. This is the diagram. See, our input consists of a discharge tube which is of length 25 centimeter diameter 2 to 5 centimeter in this tube we are inserting a mixture of helium neon and carbon dioxide gases and their ratio usually is kept as 5 is to 4 is to 1 and we are having two reflecting mirrors at the end a power supply and one uh, we can keep a minor cooling system also here and this is how we will be getting the output laser beam and this is a very efficient laser. Both ends of the tube are consisting of plane and parallel mirrors. One end is highly silvered, whereas the other is partially silvered. Electrodes are inserted to give us power supply. Now see the four level energy diagram. Ground level. Here it is getting absorbed through pumping process. Then the, the carbon dioxide atom has many, like you can say the symmetric stretch, asymmetric bending, etc. And laser transitions are happening from the metastable state to the ground state. And due to collision, because carbon dioxide is also like molecular laser, it is coming under that category. So population inversion continuously keeps happening. That is why uh, it is... Uh, are judged under the category of continuous wave laser. Advantages, it has high absorption of common materials. This is used in material processing. Disadvantage, low power density, different focal lengths are needed for thickness of application. Larger focal spot is needed to account for beam radius. And applications, they are used in medical field in eye and tissue surgery used in building cutting, used in lidar, used in skin surgery. Another molecular laser which is often asked is your nitrogen laser. See, nitrogen laser is a three-level molecular laser. Now with three-level, like our ruby laser, 
we will get short pulses and it consists of nitrogen gas molecules as the laser medium. It does not require mirrors here because when a photon is emitted from one end of laser cavity reaches the other end, it is sufficiently amplified. Nitrogen gas is typically excited with short pulses of high voltage like ruby laser. You can just mention it here that electric discharge is resulting in population inversion. Vibrational energy levels are taken and advantages of nitrogen laser are it gives a good high peak power it is very easy to construct it operates at high temperatures we do not require mirrors here and a very low risk of failure but it is not suitable for material processing it has very poor efficiency and cannot be focused on the small spot the main applications are it is used as a pumping source it is used for non-destructive testing it is used in medical and biological research also used for studying the excited state of molecules